Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, October 2, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We've got what's called bunches of stuff. Market's in an interesting position. It's done a lot of stuff over the last couple of days. Let's look at the thing objectively. We'll peer back a little bit, look at the big picture. We'll drill down and look at the shorter term picture. We'll look around the horn and we're going to take a look at some interesting divergences that happened today. And the funny part about it is, and we talked about these ad nauseum in the live room today is, they both worked out. It's funny how that works. We'll get to that later. We'll start with she's below the neckline of the head and shoulders formation. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, breaks below, one day retest. Here we are. Target is 406.65. Doesn't have to hit it to the penny, but that's the general area. Could be slightly lower. Sometimes they come up short, but this is the general target for the head and shoulders pattern. Now, what happens if they get back above the neckline? All bets are off, not just for a minute, but if they start closing back above the neckline, the original pattern that exists from the textbook is off the table. Friday, they tried to rally. They could have easily closed well on Friday and ran a test sometime this week, early or whatever, of the neckline of the head and shoulders formation. Now, that can still happen, but the point is, is that Friday, you had an attempt at a break up and a failure. Now, think about that for a moment. You say, yeah, they attempted to break up and they failed. Now, let's flip it around. What happened today? They attempted to break back down and they failed back up. So the whole thing is very, very interesting, creating a bearish wedgish formation while they're doing this back and forth type of situational stuff, driving many traders around the horn quite bonkers, I'm sure. For example, at the end of today, they were issuing pies in the face. Look what happened, for example, in the last couple of five-minute candles. These are called pies in the face. They're short covering. Buying begets buying. Traders who are short are forced to cover. It's called a mini squeeze. Here's another thing we've been discussing in the live room a lot lately, which is beware of the rip your face off rally because it's coming. It's very rare that they're just going to fall all the way to target from a head and shoulders pattern like this and not drive traders in both directions batty. It's very rare that you're going to see one of these head and shoulders formations and all of a sudden once they break below, they give you the entire trade all in one shot. Meaning in this case, since it's off a daily chart, for example, let's just say in a couple of weeks, it's very rare that that happens without driving traders absolutely bonkers slash up the wall by going back and forth and having some rip your face off rallies while they do it. They must issue pies in the face. It's customary to run a test or at least make a better attempt to run a test of the neckline that they just broke. Sure, they did it the day after. This was, I believe, a Friday, and they broke it on Thursday. They retested it Friday, and they haven't been back since, but they can certainly try it again. They want to drive you crazy. This is sponsored by the Trick, Trap, Fool, and Frustrate crew. They work for Trick and Company. Let's look at what happened over the last few days just to peer back a little bit and say, all right, what's actually happening out there? Well, you had the extension, the 45-day extension of the debt ceiling by Congress. So they kicked the can down the road once again, and they just extended the credit card, if you will, so they can borrow more money. Now, in a bull market or in a minor correction, that would be great news and markets would love it. Markets love spending and the market would rally. Well, overnight, Sunday night, the futures gap higher and all of a sudden they're rallying. Looks like that's the case, but they fail. You can interpret that any which way you want. Here's my interpretation. The actual thing 
driving price lower has nothing to do with whether or not there's an extension of the debt ceiling, the Fed raises rates again, doesn't raise rates again. It's all built into or baked into the cake as far as I'm concerned. The noise, which is the news events, the items surrounding price action is just there for the storyline. It's a hard concept to wrap your head around, but if you use the charts, all that stuff becomes storyline. For example, how do we use the charts in this scenario? Well, let's look at the daily chart and say, all right, so we've got this bearish wedgish thing. They can go either way. They can make a new low. They can run a test to the neckline, the head and shoulders neckline up here. They could come short either way. What are some of the numbers that are important that they have to really a stay above and b clear the next place to get something going for a bull case let's start there the first number and the first order of business in my book was staying above 427 now that's where they ran to get above in the last let's say five or ten minutes of the day and if you look at today's candle what did they do they did another retrace they retested a low from the other day they did another retrace or a retrace of this tail low, and they finished okay on the day with a light late day rally. Doesn't tell you too much from the big picture, but what I can tell you is 427 is important. What's the next place above? Where can they actually light a match? Where can the next spark occur if they start to push above? What creates the next leg down? Well, first we'll start with the obvious, below today's low. But 427 is a big deal. Get back below 427, close a day back below 427, and you're likely going to have the Bears out on offense once again. The Bears. You got the Fed governors out. You had Jerry speaking today in an event. You had another Fed governor or two making comments. Interest rates higher for longer. All that discussion is part and parcel to the storyline. I also want to talk about the divergences. So what we're going to do is talk about the bond market. We'll look at yields. We'll also talk about the dollar a little bit and divergences that occurred today. First, let's see how we did today inside the numbers. Now, the morning session was rather quiet. Price did move. We did have participation. We did have some traders making money, but there wasn't a crisp type of morning situation but again and i always remind the traders in the live room that just because it's quiet it's a paint dry kind of day price can and does move it makes trading more difficult put that on a sticky note so we had some rhetoric you could read this for yourself some of this was in the first part of the on the docket newsletter if you haven't signed up for on the docket please sign up for on the docket it's a new thing each and every day I'm putting more effort into getting some more categories and topics discussed each and every day. And of course, we add some levity to it. Check your shorts. You got to read this one to understand it. Kick the can down the road. Pre-game warm-up routine. Thinking pictures. We had a chart of Haynes brands today. It's interesting why. It's the MUI indicator. Go ahead and read about it. We have cycle the tinfoil hat or recycle the tinfoil hat. How about Reconomics. We have the psych ward, a little bit of trading psychology in here each and every day. That's about it. And then we'll add and subtract some sections here and there when it's warranted. Trying to have some fun with this piece. On the docket dot mystrategicforecast.com. 427.60 was an important place. That was going to be our bull pivot today. Getting below opens the door for 426 and lower. We'll get to that in a moment. Here's where the rubber meets the road about nine o'clock. What's the deal? This is what traders are coming here for. Whether it's for inside the numbers or the live room, either way, you're coming for this data. Below 425.90 opens the door for 424. Okay, fair enough. We think better in picture. So right of the vertical is today's activity. The horizontal line at the bottom is 424.40. They missed it by that much, six cents. And came back for a retest again, came less close, and took off into the end of the day. That was the place. It's always a give or take. Six cents qualifies as the give or take. We had traders that bought this in the afternoon time. They emailed me. Nice trade. 
This is the one we were waiting on. There was a spike, the former low, and rip it back up in the other direction trade. Some traders in the room took it. And what I said all morning long was you had to be willing to take the ride or buy it down at 424.40. Give or take. And I said it in the live room. 424.50, 424.35. In there is where the place is. You'll see it in here over and over and over again. 424.50, 40. 40. We just have a additional number as a just in case here. You always have to give traders the what if it's wrong place so they know. Remember the other place, 427.60. This morning, that was overhead resistance. As soon as they got below, they couldn't stay above. Tried it one time late in the morning, and then they collapsed back down. That was our bull pivot if they could stay above. And they really couldn't. They tried one time early on or early in the afternoon, late in the morning, and they couldn't do it. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. We did have some traders that took a short 427.40 to 60 is overhead resistance, 932. You could see here, this is the opening print today, the opening candle. They found overhead resistance, pulled right back. So we did have traders willing and able to short that place early in the morning. We're not gonna classify this as a great trading day, an easy trading day, nothing like that. It is what it is. We had the numbers and you go with it. You take what Mrs. Market gives you each and every day. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. I mentioned before, I wanted to talk a little bit about bonds and interest rates and that kind of conversation since it's front and center in everyone's mind, in the news, all that stuff. I thought it's worth the conversation. This is a picture of the 10-year yield I've done the work, and in my book, 4.89 is A, magnetic, B, a target, and C, should be overhead resistance. Now, not to say rates can't go higher later, but they're going to start to pull back at some point. They go up, they pull back. They go up, they pull back. Once they hit this number, let's just say, let's map it out real quick. Let's say they hit this number and start to pull back. Just Hypothetically, they're going to go a short of 5%. That's garden variety stuff. Maybe they spike it through, but that's my number. Where would they come back to? This is a weekly chart. Well, they come back to the last breakout area. Where's that? How about right here? So they come back to four and a half, four and a quarter, 430. In that neighborhood is where you would expect a pullback just when the media hops on board saying rates are going at 10% and whatever they're going to say at the time, that's when they'll probably find some overhead resistance. Anybody interested in the two-year? I've done the work in the two-year. I've got 528 and 585. Check that. It's 565 up there. How about the Fed funds rate? Fed funds rate, 5.33. There's a method to the madness. There's a reason why I'm bringing this stuff up. The dollar. Dollar finally hit a target that I had on the board for the live room members for probably a couple of weeks now, if not more. There's another one above. Whether they get there or not, we don't know. But sooner or later, probably sooner than later, the dollar will begin to pull back. Rates will begin to pull back. This is the way markets work. So there's a method to the madness. Why am I bringing this up? If you're sitting on cash, you owe it to yourself to take advantage of buying very liquid T-bills. They're paying a ridiculous amount. If you can get 5% plus or minus anything on either side in a three-month T-bill or whatever it is, it's worth it to take a look. It's free money. You just keep it liquid and you don't put all your eggs in one basket. But if you're sitting on cash, you got to earn some money on the cash. If you're not getting it from the bank, if the bank's got you tricked into one of these 1% situations, you got to do it a favor for yourself. This too will reverse and correct three months straight up in the dollar, give or take. How much longer in time are they going to go before correcting? Time is more important than price. Just look at it this way. They should be getting tired pretty soon. Let's check out Camp IWM. How about a new low today? Same routine in the last couple of five-minute candles today from an intraday perspective. However, what they were not able to do, which I find interesting because they could have done it if they wanted to. There are no accidents or coincidences. They could not close back above the low that they broke on this move down today. 
That's somewhat of a thrashing in technical terms for Camp IWM. Now, here's a weekly chart. Now, watch this. See this trend line? Now, it's subject to approval, if you will. It's subject to interpretation, whether or not it's specifically on the low, on the low. But you could see what's going on here, even if it's touching it a little bit, even if I move it up a little bit. And you could see that the line is touching it. You could, I could have done that first, and you would say, oh, look at that. And I did it where I did it, and you say, oh, look at that. So it all depends on how it's presented, how the analysis is presented. You and me, you and I, all of us, can be manipulated by what a chart looks like when it's published by somebody else. So I want to just point that out and say, forget whether it's on or not on the line. Either way, the concept is, what happens if this line breaks? Well, then the next thing is, what comes into view is these lows here. If this line breaks, you're basically looking at drawing a line over and saying, well, what's the next major area of support? Not from an intraday perspective, but from a bigger picture perspective, and you're coming down let's say to 169, something like that. It's always important to know both sides of the tape. This is obviously bearish. When you look at the monthly chart, here's something we discuss ad nauseum. We have a channel. We have what's called a bearish, wedgish, kind of channelish, whatever you want to call it. That's what this is. And looking at it from a monthly chart perspective, if this bottom of the channel breaks, Forget these lows here and here. From a monthly chart perspective, that's very bearish and promotes a whole big time other situation going on. But this is a monthly chart. So it takes a long time to develop. You go back and forth. It breaks one month, it back tests it, it's going back and forth. You can't trade off a monthly chart, but you have to know what the big picture is. That's the point. Closer buy stuff. You have some pivot lows down here. You have some unfinished business of a gap all the way down here. So there's a lot of stuff down here around 170. If they test the low, spike the low, either way, unless you get a quick and crisp flip around situation where you get to get a squeeze, you really have to get above 177 to get anything going in the upward slash northern direction from a squeeze perspective. They can get up there and it's a big move from where they are, but to get a real secondary push, get to this high from Friday and then run a test or at least an attempt like we talked about in the spiders at the neckline of the head and shoulders formation, you're going to have to get above 177. Write that down, put it on a sticky note about team transports. Buttigieg's crew. We had a number on the board, 14,973. They closed for all intents and purposes right on top of it today. You don't even need that number anymore. Why? Because they're down here going back and forth. All they have to do is give up this low from the other day, this low from today, close below the 200 period moving averages and a whole nother thing going on all the way down to 14,4 and lower. Transports were taken out behind the woodshed today up until what? Up until the last couple of candles, they were creeping up, creeping up, and then all of a sudden they decided to get a little bit of a push higher into the end of the day. When you look at the hourly chart, what was this? This was a spike of the low, and in day trading terms, it's a rip it back up in the other direction, but all they did was test the low, and they were buyers. There was a bull bear battle down there. But this is not a rally. This is a bounce from a spike of the low. Remember, below all the moving averages, the trend is your friend until what? That's right, until it's not. And that applies to all markets. Remember before we talked about divergences? So we had an interesting situation today. So the IWM is my favorite market leading indicator. And the transports is my second favorite market leading indicator a number one canary in the coal mine. Both were getting hit pretty hard today, at least this morning, while the Qs and the semis were rallying. So we had tech and the semis, which is a subset of tech, rallying. And we had the two garden variety or staple indicator, as I like to say, in the transports and the IWM. They were weak. And the spiders were getting dragged down, but they weren't really getting killed. It wasn't a speed or velocity type of move. 
and what we talked about in the live room is one of the divergences is going to win out. Either the transports and the IWM are going to flip around and go up or the SMH and the Qs are going to flip around and come down. Well, actually, both things happened. It was somewhat of a wild west out there from an intraday perspective today. doesn't make it easy to trade, but it was nonetheless. The financials, below all the moving averages, the trend is your friend. You can see this chart. Looks very similar to the other one we looked at where they couldn't rally back to get back above this low here from last week. Sure, they had a bounce into the end of the day, but they made the choice to close, to make a new closing low. That's in the bearish camp, could be a fake out operation, but on its face, taking the market at face value, that's a bearish type of situation. 3250 is your last line of defense, give or take. Below that, things will open up down to this gap down here and potentially lower. Just to get a different view, you look at the monthly chart, you see a 20 period moving average rolling over. So watch out for if these meet and cross over but that's a while out because this is a monthly chart. But the point is, is that essentially the 20 period moving average is acting as a guideline holding the market from going any higher. You can look at it any way you want. That's the first thing I really see when I bring up this chart, other than the fact that this is a bearish type of situation. You have a move lower, you have an attempt at a rally, but they've created a channel and if this has another leg lower, guess what? Look out below, 26.65 is a target for the XLF. Write that down, put it on a sticky note. Doesn't get activated until you crack some of these lows, but that would be the case. Smash mouth, hey, decent day on a relative basis against the S&P. S&P finished flat by the end of the day, more or less. SMH was up almost 1%, 8, 9 tenths of 1%, but where? into the 20 period moving average, still below the 2150 period moving averages. So what did they do? They came to back test or run a test of this breakdown candle. They did it on Friday and they hung out today. So what they're doing is they're going sideways at present. Are they building energy to make another move higher into these moving averages more so into the next big time breakdown candle at 150, 149 in that neighborhood? Is that possible? Yes, that's possible. You're going to get some rip your face offs. They're coming. It would be great if they sent the memo out the day before. By the way, if I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I am David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.